Today, in this very bright white box, we're going to be taking a look at something new from HD Zero, and that is a new monitor. But it's not just a monitor. This, in fact, is like an Event VRX. And what I'm going to do today is tell you what it is all about. Now, just before we get into this, I just want to say Carl at HD Zero did send me this over for free. He has not paid me to make this video. He's not seen this video before it's been published. And as always, my thoughts are entirely my own. Okay, so I don't want to waste too much time doing an unboxing, but I am going to do it anyway, just to show you what you get in this kit. So there's a lovely piece of cardboard, which is the quick start guide and shows you how to use the monitor. I'm not going to waste any more time on that, but it is there included. We have some HD Zero stickers, and then we have the device itself. If I just tip it over, you will find inside a couple of accessories alongside the unit. So we have a screen protector included, ready to be installed. There is two straps that's going to allow you to mount it and then we've got the monitor itself. Now, those straps go through these little hoops on the back there. And as you can see, there is some IO around the sides, which we'll take a look at a bit more in a minute. Now, this little monitor is not only going to be popular with HD Zero pilots, there are a lot of analog FPV users that are going to like this as well. From that hint, you've probably guessed, yes, it has an analog receiver built in alongside the HD Zero one. And in fact, this is like a mini version of the HD Zero Event VRX. It has dual SMA antenna inputs, which work for both the analog and digital FPV. And the monitor will actually auto switch between those two systems so if you were flying between one and another, it will auto switch for you. It also has a lot of other really nice features as well. So for instance, we've got a 4.3 inch high brightness, 800 nits, 720p LCD display. We have a built in DVR with a micro SD card slot on the side, and it even supports HDMI output as well. What's really cool about this monitor, though, is on the analog system, it will actually upscale it to 720p. It will record that on the DVR and give you that on the HDMI output. But it also has a built-in deinterlacer like we saw on the HD Zero goggles. And that, again, is also applied to the DVR and HDMI output to give you the best possible analog footage. Alongside that micro SD card and the HDMI output, you have a USB-C port over here for configuration. And then on this side of the monitor, we have a dual DC input. We have a jack as well as an XT30 supporting 2 to 5S. We have a 3.5 mil video and analog input via CVBS. And there is also a physical power switch on the side here as well. Moving around to the rear, you'll find that there are various mounting options on it. So for instance, you can see we've got two threaded post inserts there. There's these little hoops here for the straps that I showed you earlier. And there's going to be open source CAD files available for this as well, allowing you to design and 3D print your own mounts and accessories for this monitor too. On the top, as I said, we do have our antenna inputs. They are SMA, and we've simply got one on the left and one on the right, and they are shared between both the analog and the HD Zero input. One last thing just to mention is there is a tripod fitting on the bottom of this monitor as well. That's handy for whilst out in the field, but you're also going to see a lot of adapters and stuff come on the market for people wanting to mount these directly to remote controllers. It's something I'm going to probably have a look at myself as well. So again, alongside those posts on the back, you've got lots of options with getting this mounted onto whatever you need to fit it to. Now, another one of the really great features about this monitor is not only the fact that it is based on open source software, but it's just how quick it kicks in. So for instance, if I power it on, you will see just how fast it is to go from off to on-screen display. There you go, less than two seconds. HD Zero are calling it instant on. Not quite instant, but there is nothing that I've seen that is faster. Now, the great thing about this, as I've said, is I'm showing you here analog FPV. And what you're seeing there is that upscaled and deinterlaced image there. But you can also record that onto the DVR as well. I've got a micro SD card. This card does need to be formatted as FAT32. But when it is, you can simply pop it in. And then if I press this little button over here, press it again, you can see a little record icons come up. And we're then able to record that on the display unit itself. Now, this monitor 
doesn't have a built-in menu system as such for its configuration. There are buttons along the bottom. So for instance, we can change our channels manually just like that. It doesn't auto scan as such when you power it on. It selects analog or digital depending on what input it's receiving, but it doesn't seem to scan through all of the channels. It will just sit there waiting on the channel that you've left it on. You then got the record button as I showed there just now. So you can press that to start and stop recording. You can change the band. So for instance, if I press and hold F and scroll through, you can see we've gone through from R4, L4, A4, B4, E4, back to F4. So it supports all of the usual band options. So we'll just need to go back to R4 there. There we go. Give it a second and that will kick back in. There we are. And then you can even change the screen brightness from the device itself. I've currently got it on minimum to be able to show you it here on the camera. But if I press and hold this one, I can adjust that, which allows me to turn the screen brightness up and down. As I've said, it will go up to 800 nits of brightness, which should make it really good for seeing outside. We'll take a look later on what that's like, or you can turn it right down. I'm going to set it back to there. Along the top, you can then see some menu options. So you can see we've got the battery voltage as well as the cells that it's detected. I press that again, gives us the info on the input up here, the recording icon, as well as the mode over here. The final option you've got on the unit here is this button here, which allows you to select the mode. So you can jump via the AV input, which is that 3.5 mil jack over there, or you can press it again to go back into RF Auto, which will auto select between the HD0 and analog. Now, for some additional configuration, you can plug this into your PC via the USB-C port on the side, and that will give you some additional configuration options that you don't get on the monitor itself. There, you've got things like additional brightness, contrast, and some other display settings, so you can just tune it like you like. Now, the configuration app for this is via that USB-C port on the side, and you use the HD0 Programmer app. Now, this is designed to allow you to program the HD0 VTXs with the USB adapter, but this also now supports the hybrid viewer, which is this monitor here, but it also supports the Event VRX as well. Now, if we look under the options for the hybrid viewer, you can see we have brightness, contrast, saturation, backlight, cell count option, as well as the battery warning voltage. Here is where you would also update the firmware on the monitor as well. Well, today there are no other options available in this, although Carl has told me there are plans to add more in the future, including the ability to turn on and off the recording of the OSD. Okay, now before we get this into the field, the next thing we're going to need to do is tear it down and take a look inside. So taking it apart looks fairly straightforward. There's four screws on the back. So we're going to go in there and take a look. Now I'm using my trusty iFixit screwdriver kit for this. It's one my wife bought me for Christmas. It's been an incredibly useful toolkit, if I'm honest. I keep meaning to do a video about it, but I haven't had a chance. But if you're interested in getting yourself a good set, ugh, screws are quite tight. Um, if you're interested in getting yourself a good set, it is definitely worth a look. Just going to turn those over. There's one that hasn't come out. Which one is it? Let's find it. Oh, it's that one up there in the top left. Let's try that again. No, that one doesn't want to come out. Let's pop that there. Let's give the back cover a gentle pull. Oh, that come off very easy. And there comes the screw. There we go. Wow, that was a lot easier to get into than I was expecting. No plastic clips. So on the back, you've just got a little grill there for the airflow. And then inside the monitor itself, you can see the main board. Wow, we've got everything here located on the back. What's actually quite interesting looking inside it is we clearly have the HD0 section. We've then got an analog FPV module there from the looks of it. I'm guessing HT0. Ah, no, there's the Divi Math chipset. So there it is. I was I was missing it for a second there. I couldn't see it. So what we've got is the star SOC there. We see that in the HT0 goggles. There is a Toshiba. No, no, it's not Toshiba. That's what's that say on it? Can't quite see. Tos, Toswell, Tonwell. I think we might have to get that under the microscope to have a look what that is. I don't know what that one is. We've got our HD0 chipset, our FPGA. Very similar setup to the HD0 goggles or VRX module in that sense. So what you've got is your 
inputs for your digital video. There'll be a HD0 chipset probably under there. That will be their RF front end chipset. That is actually screwed in place. Let's, um, let's undo that and take a look. That'll be the front end RF transceiver. Yeah, there it is. There's that DiviMath chipset located right underneath there so what you've got is your rf front ends coming into here and here into there you've then got your divi math chipset which goes down to the second divi math chipset the fpga not sure what this one here is we've then got the star chipset over here which will be running the dvr and usually the OS as well, if I recall. Just looking at the RF design on this, I think that the analog input only uses one antenna. And the reason I say that is, if you take a look here, that comes down and then that splits off into this analog module here. However, that isn't the case on this side here. So what that would mean is from the front, if I just turn the monitor over, this antenna would be doing the analog and digital FPV and this antenna would be doing digital only. Okay, so I was actually being a bit of an idiot. That chipset there is the display driver. I actually forgot whilst I was talking that we're looking at a display here and not just a receiver. So what we have is as follows, our digital input and our digital combined analog input into our HD0 RF front end chipset. And then that splits off with that little track you can see down there to the analog module. You've then got that going to the main HD0 chipset. We've got our traditional FPGA as well as SRAM over here that we usually see on HD0. There's a wind bond flash chip down here for the FPGA. And then there's another wind bond flash chip up here that goes to our star main chipset. This is the chipset that does the DVR recording, but also has the main OS on board as well. You then have your display driver down here, which is sending our image out to the main display. And then we have our HDMI transceiver over here, giving us our HDMI output. Something that is new in this that we've not seen from HD0 before is an analog receiver module. I don't know what module they're using. So what we're going to do next is try and pop the cover off and have a look. Okay, so that came off a bit easier than I was expecting. It wasn't soldered down. Now you can't see what chipset that is there, but I've already had a quick look under the microscope. We have an RTC 6715 from Richwave. Pretty much exactly what I would have expected to find in an analog FPV receiver. It's a traditional 5.8 band FM receiver, and it's the kind of chipset you'll find in pretty much everything. It's just on its own separate daughter board that is then soldered to the main board. Overall, I have to say, everything here looks really nice. What you'll also see up here, there's a UART located there, pretty much the same as we see in many of HD Zero's other products. They always tend to have a UART there available for breaking out. You can do things on that, probably like connect an Express LRS receiver for some additional functionality. We have then some additional pads down here. You can see we've got TX, uh, TM, TCK, TDI, TDO, ground and 3.3 volt pads down there at the side too. We've got our fan header over there. I'm not going to pop this board out. I don't think there's anything else on the back looking at it. I think everything is on this side. You'll then also notice around the board there are some other connections. You've got another RX and TXD down here. And you've got your usual test ports for HD0 located all over. Pretty much exactly what I would have expected to see. Everything looks really clean and tidy. And another nice design from the guys over at HD0. Now, I don't know who Carl has managed to bribe. However, the sun did shine down here in Wales, which has allowed me to put this new HD0 monitor through its paces and see what it's actually like in some bright conditions. Okay, now just out in the field with this, and it's windy as here again today, so I don't know how much the wind is going to come on the audio, but just to talk about how easy the display is to see. Now, this is really hard to show you on camera. However, I can see that absolutely fine. I'm looking at it. I'm in sunlight here, so if I just move around to where the worst position for me will be, so that is there. And I'm not going to say it's easy to see, but I can absolutely see the monitor with the brightness on it it's fine if i just shift into some of the shade here you should be able to start to see it a bit better there i have got the anti-reflective screen protector on so that does help 
you should be able to see my video feed there. But overall, I think in all but the very brightest scenarios, I think most people will be happy with how the display looks. So just to give you a little bit of flight footage, the first thing you're going to see is HD zero. Now the real nice thing about this monitor is if it's powered up with an SD card before you actually turn your quad on, it will start auto recording just like the HD zero goggles do. So what you can actually do is put it down on the side. You don't have to worry about it. It'll automatically switch between analog and HD zero as long as they're on the same channels and the DVR will start to record. It does record in the same TS file format as the HD Zero goggles, so you may need to change that if you want to edit it in Resolve. There is a script out there that allows you to do it. And as you can see on the screen, it does record the OSD as well. It records it in the layout that you had. If you bring the top menu up, it will record what you see too. Although Carl has told me there will be an option coming in the near future to allow you to turn off the OSD recording if you want to. Next, moving over to analog, and we're using that iFly R5 quad that I reviewed on the channel a few weeks ago. Now, you may see a little bit of interference in this footage. This is on the quad. It is not on the HD Zero monitor. If you watch my review, you will see exactly the same thing on the goggles footage that I was recording on that. That is no reflection on what the HD Zero monitor here is actually doing. But what you can see is how good the image looks, what the resolution looks like in this DVR footage. Okay, now before I share with you my thoughts on the new HD Zero monitor, we should talk about price. This is coming in at $175. You shouldn't think about this though as a monitor. What you're getting for $175 is a mini event VRX. You're getting a device with a built-in high nits display, built-in analog and HD Zero receiver, built-in DVR, HDMI output. And I have to say, I have zero complaints about the way this product performs or works at all. About the only little complaint I would have is I'd like to be able to turn off the OSD recording in HD Zero, and Carl has already told me that is coming in the future. Where HD Zero is really doing well right now isn't trying to compete with the likes of Avatar HD or DJI. HD Zero have pushed themselves very much into that niche of ultra low latency, fixed latency FPV. The HD Zero goggles at the time of release were the most compatible goggle on the market today. They still are absolutely one of the best options out there. And what Carl is doing is producing products that really do fill the niche cases that a lot of people want. We've seen the release of the new mini VTX kit for Whoops, the Eco one. That again is bringing the weight down for that segment. And this little device here is just again delivering a product that many people are going to want and need on a daily basis. I can see many people at FPV races wanting to use this for their own use. And I think again, it's great to see Carl continue to push things forward. Now, if you are interested in getting one, there will be a link to it in the description. It is actually an affiliate link. I do have an affiliate link for HD Zero. I have one for HD Zero and Avatar HD. I'd have one for DJI to try and balance things out if I could, 
but they hate me, so I don't. However, if you're interested in getting one, there will be a link there if you want to use it, but don't. Go straight to HD Zero's website, check it out. I'm really interested in questions and thoughts on this monitor as well, if you have any. And finally, I just want to say a huge thank you to Carl at HD Zero for sending this over. We're going to be talking about that new Eco VTX, that's that one there in the near future as well. So if you're interested in seeing that, please do make sure you are subscribed to the channel. There is also a link to my HD Zero goggles review. It's an hour long nearly, so do prepare yourself, but I do try to cover everything there is to say in that. And again, if you're interested in supporting us, there will also be a link below to my Patreon as well as buy me a coffee. Now, that's it from me on this one. I hope you found it interesting. Stay safe, and I will speak to you soon.